1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 9 to 10. For it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. You shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. Is it oxen God is concerned about? Or does he say it all together for our sakes? Look at the answer. For our sakes, no doubt, this is written. That he who plows should plow in hope. And he who treasures in hope should be partaker of his hope. Underline that. He who plows should plow in hope. And he who treasures in hope should be partaker of his hope. The reason you don't muzzle the ox that is busy plowing the field and threshing the grain is to allow the ox to eat some of the grains. Otherwise, it will be wicked for one to deny the hard-working ox the fruit of his labor. True? But the reason why the law was written was for our sakes. Because God expects you and I, the believers, to plow in hope because he who treasures in hope will become a partaker of his hope. Hope, therefore, is personal to the one who plow in hope, to the one who treasures in hope, he shall be partaker of his hope. So today's title is partaker of hope. Partaker of hope. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 6. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 6. And hard-working farmers should be the first to enjoy the fruit of their labor. The New King James Bible says, the hard-working farmer must be first to partake of the crops. He must not be denied the fruit of his labor. Because remember, he has plowed in hope. He has plowed in hope. He planted the crops. He watered the crops. So, it makes sense for him to be the first to partake of the harvest. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. That is why it is impossible for you to plant a coconut and expect to reap a pineapple. He who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. If you spend time watching TV, doing nothing, don't be surprised when you have no money. Galatians 6 verse 7 tells us he says, whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. But he who sows to the Spirit, will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. If you spend time with God, I won't be surprised when God answers your prayer. If you spend time studying the Bible, I won't be surprised if the devil abandons you and leave you alone and stop troubling you. What you have been praying for, if you spend time praying for it, I won't be surprised 
when what you have been praying for, you get it and you give testimony. Remember, it's what you sow that you reap. Say, but evil souls to the spirit will of the spirit reap what? Everlasting life. John chapter 9, verses 10 to 11. John chapter 9, verses 10 to 11. Therefore, they said to him, How were your eyes open? This was a man that was born blind. There are some genetic hereditary condition that has to go today. They have to leave you. If you believe that, say amen. He answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Shiloh and wash. And I went and washed. And I received sight. You too will receive sight. The word of God will give you the benefit of what is loaded in the word of God. If only you can hope in the word of God. This man obeyed the word of God and never remained the same afterwards. I've never seen a man that obeyed the word of God and remained the same afterwards. But I've seen people that did not obey the word of God and live to regret it. But when they now obey the word of God, they now became the recipient of the blessing of the word of God. You too become a recipient of it. Partaker of hope. Partaker of hope. Romans chapter 15 verse 13. Romans 15 verse 13. Now, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. It pays to believe God. There is joy and peace if you are believing God. If you are the believing type, there is associated joy and peace that you get from God for just believing God. Because at the front of every problem rather than you losing your sleep you will not lose your sleep you see the presence of peace is not the absence of trouble the presence of peace is the presence of god when you believe god god gives you joy and peace peace comes from god now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. There is sadness and unrest if you are not going to believe God. In 2 Kings chapter 6, are you with me? In 2 Kings chapter 6, Elisha, the prophet of God, saw in a vision and exposed the tactics the, the tactics of the king of Syria who was at war with Israel at that time. He exposed their war tactics that they were plotting privately. God showed Elisha in his room. When you walk with God, God will expose your enemies. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was troubled. So he plotted to capture Elisha because he was told how this secret was leaked. God showed Elisha. You see that in verses 8 to 13. Verses 8 to 13. But from verses 14 to 17 is where I want us to focus. 14 to 17. Therefore, he sent horses and chariots and a great army there. Who was this? The king of Syria. And they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servants of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, 
Alas, my master, what shall we do? 16 and 17. So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. That is what happened to every child of God. Those who are with you are more than those who are against you. That is why I pray for you that the eyes of your mind shall be opened by God. Say amen. I said everybody has eyes in their minds, but not every eyes, not every eye can see. Everybody has eyes, but not every eye can see. Except God opens your heart. That's why David said, open my eyes. And this, in this instance, the servant only saw the enemy, but did not see the provision. At times, for you to see the provision of God, you need to see the provision of God with the eyes of faith. So he answered, the master said to him, for those do not, be, do, do not fear, because that's the tactics of the devil, to make you to be afraid. But God always say, do not fear. Turn somebody and say, do not fear. Do not fear. Because there's nothing that will happen that has not happened. And there's nothing that has happened that took God by surprise. And there's nothing that God wants to happen that will not happen. Even the devil cannot stop it. Hallelujah. Are you on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? If you're on the Lord's side, you are a victor, not a victim. Verse 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray. Open his eyes that he may see. That is your prayer. I want you to pray this morning. Lord, open my eyes to see. When, you, when God opens your eyes to see, you will not be running elter, skelter, looking for God where there is no God. When God opens your eyes to see, you will indeed see as God sees. But you need someone to pray for you. And you need to pray for yourself. He says, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. What did he see? And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. For indeed, those that are for us are indeed more than those who are against us. There are secret things, brothers and sisters, our eyes cannot see unless the eyes of our minds are open. Bible makes us understand the eyes of understanding in some people has been blinded by the God, small g, the God of this world. And we understand that that small g God is devil. He has blinded the eyes of the mind of some people lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine. That is why those people are doing what they are doing because they, their eyes have been blinded. They don't know their right from their left even though they go to church. They cannot sleep peacefully because there is no peace for the wicked. But when a man turns to the God, the veil is removed. Your veil shall be removed in Jesus' name when you turn to God. He said, when a man turns to Jesus, the veil is removed. Because only in Jesus can the veil be removed. Then you will be able to see where you are going. There are secret things our eyes cannot see unless the eyes of our minds are opened. From today, I pray to God, to open your eyes to see the things revealed to us, revealed to you by the Spirit of God. Say amen. amen. That's, that's a simple prayer. You wake up in the morning and say, Lord, open my eyes to see. Is that not a good prayer? Because when Elisha prayed the same prayer, did God not answer? <laughs> and when the man's eyes were open, was he blind before? 
He wasn't blind physically, but he was blind spiritually. So every time he said, God, open my eyes to see, we are talking about spiritual sight. The things your natural eyes cannot see. And that's what makes a difference between someone that is working with God and somebody that is not. Deuteronomy 29, verse 29. Deuteronomy 29, verse 29. The secret things belong to the Lord. God has secrets. <laughs> the secret things belong to God. But he doesn't keep all those secrets himself. He reveals those secrets to us. Especially if you are born again. He said the secret things belong to the Lord, our God. But those things which are revealed. Can you see? He doesn't keep all the secrets to himself. He reveals them to his friends. He reveals them to his children. He reveals them to those who are genuine following him. Otherwise, if we don't get benefits of following God, if the benefit of following God doesn't make you to stand out, why are you following him? You see? There must be a difference between those who are following God and those who are not. Don't you know? He that sows to the flesh, to the, to the spirit shall of course reap what? The things of the spirit. Everlasting life. So the things which appear were not from the things we see. The things which appear are revealed. That's why we can see them. Because when the eyes of the servant of Elisha was opened, those things that he could not see before were revealed to him. Please turn to God and say, God, open my eyes to see. From the word of God, things are revealed. And when God, when you begin to see things from the word of God, you will minimize what you see. Because at times when we don't see things, we are frustrated, we are upset. I'll begin to use our mouth to say the wrong thing. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. You need hope to be established. Hope in the God of hope. Abraham, who against hope, in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations. Romans 4, 18. Hope does not disappoint. Another translation says, hope does not make one to be ashamed. Romans 5, 5. The man born blind received his sight, didn't he? Because of hope. He hoped in the word of God. God. Jesus told him, said, go and wash yourself in the pool of Shiloh. He did not argue with God because he had his own problem. He was the one that had problem that came to Jesus. Why would you argue with Jehovah? Was it not you that needed help? And he told you what to do. Why would you now say, I cannot do it? Then if you cannot do it, then you are, you are not ready to be helped, isn't it? But if you came to God sincerely and you want help, won't you do what he says you should do? So the man did it and see what happened. He became a partaker of his own hope. Was that not the case? Elisha was delivered from the expectation of the king of Syria because of hope. He hoped in God. And God opened Elisha's eyes and he saw the chariots and the horses horses and the chariots of fire all around him. You see, you are not alone if you are a child of God. Angels are watching over us. Amen. Amen. They are surrounding us. You see, that's why those that know God say, who is he that will bring a charge against the elect? It is God that justifies. You are not supposed to worry. You are supposed to believe. Only believe God and you shall be established. Believe his prophet and you shall prosper. God told Joshua, 
after the death of Moses. Joshua chapter 1 verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. Verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous. In the period of uncertainty, that's when you need hope. I said in the period of uncertainty, doctor's diagnosis have said something. Or news from the TV have said something. Or you are aware of an information that makes you upset. That is the time of uncertainty. That is the time you need hope. God is a God of hope. There's an abundance of hope in God through Christ Jesus. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it. How often? Day and night. That's why it's a pity if you say you are a Christian and you don't study the Bible. He said you should think, meditate on, on it, the word of God, day and night, that you may observe to do according to what is written in it and see what will happen. For then you will make your way prosperous. Who is the one that makes his way prosperous? You. So, when you know the word of God, it's for whose good? Your good. If you don't know the word of God, it's for whose disadvantage? Yours. So, when I say, come for Bible study, and you don't come for Bible study, you are not doing yourself a good. For then, you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. There are so many things that the word of God can reveal to us. Those things that will cause us to be afraid because of what is happening. And devil capitalizes on it. But when your eyes of the mind are open, you will you'll be blinded to what the devil has capitalized on. You'll be seeing what God has provided. Faith will make you to see the provision of God. Number one, how does hope come? Look at that verse. Said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. What does that mean? Let the word of God dwell in you richly. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. What it means is that don't stop. Don't stop speaking the word of God. Don't stop speaking the word of God. In the, especially in the period of uncertainty. When you don't know what is going to happen. It is orchestrated by the devil to make you afraid. But God said, do not be afraid. That is the time you must speak the word of God. That is how hope can come to your heart. He said, do not let this word depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate. Meditate in it. The word meditate means to pour over. To pour over it. To look at it intently to study it what is god saying to see how it applies to your situation meditate in it day and night that's why when you are a child of god you memorize scriptures you don't put bible under your pillow because it cannot it cannot it cannot deter the enemy from coming to you the enemy are spiritual those spiritual those demons are spiritual so, when you just put your Bible under your pillow, what can that do? The word of God must be in your heart and in your mouth. That is what makes a difference between the one that is born again and the one that is just going to church. So, number two, it says you must pour over the word of God. As you pour over on the word of God, what happens? Hope comes to you. You cannot have the word of God and be hopeless. Amen? If you are a hopeless person, then you have not met God. People that have met God are never hopeless. Because hope, God is the God of hope. He says, but you shall meditate in it 
day and night. The more you pour over the word of God, the more you pour over the word of God, the more hopeful you become. The more you pour over the word of God, the more hopeful you become. That you may observe to do. You see, that's why we need to pour over it so that you can observe the details. Observe the details. Say, you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Because they are written for you. So that you will not be afraid. For then you will make your way. You see, that's the result. Because when you sow to the Spirit, you reap from the Spirit everlasting life. Said you will make your way prosperous. That is where your testimony comes from. Because you have been tested. You have gone through the high of the needle. You've been there. Then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have what? Good success. Good success does not come by luck. It comes from God. Good success does not come by luck. It comes from God. In fact, in the old Bible, there is no luck. There is no luck. God never do anything by luck. It comes from God through obedience to God. Number four. Hope comes from the word of God. Hope comes from the word of God. And if there is a good success, there is a bad success. A counterfeit success. The one that destroys lives. And God will never give you what will destroy you. Amen? God will never give you what will destroy you. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and it adds no sorrow with it. Proverbs 10, 22. Proverbs 10, 22. If it is from God, it will be without sorrow. The reason why some people cannot testify of any good thing that has happened to them is because it's not from God. Because if it's from God, <laughs> you will testify. It had no sorrow with it. It had no sorrow with it. Partaker of hope. Partaker of hope. So as you go into this month, brothers and sisters, and those online as well, I want you to have hope. In fact, have more hope in God. Because it's only by the Spirit of God that hope abounds. Say, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And that hope will abound in you by the Spirit. So only by the help of the Holy Spirit that hope abounds. So anyone that is in Christ, you can never be hopeless. Anyone that is in Christ Jesus, you can never be hopeless. And if you, you are hopeless and you say you are in Christ Jesus, then your eyes, the eyes of your mind needs to be open. In 2 Kings chapter 5, 2 Kings chapter 5, we know about the man that was wealthy but not healthy, Naaman. Naaman had a hopeless medical condition. But he was hopeful in God. In the God of Elijah. That's why he came. But look at verse 14. Verse 14. The man that was leprous, that, that was a leper, his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. Someone is hearing me right now. You are going to be made clean. In Mark chapter 5, Mark chapter 5, verse 28 to 29. Mark chapter 5, 28 to 29. The woman had 12 years of bleeding disorder. But hope brought her 
out of hiding. You know, shame will take you into hiding, but hope will bring you out of hiding. Somebody is listening to me. In this month on, hope in God will bring you out of hiding in the name of Jesus. For she said in herself, she said, what have you been saying to yourself quietly? This thing will kill me. Is that what you have been saying? I cannot get the job. Is that what you have been saying? I'm not qualified. Is that what you have been saying? Change your confession. Say only what God has said in his word. Last week, check the message. Nevertheless, at your word. When Peter met Jesus, Peter was complaining. You see, we have been toiling all night, but we have caught nothing. You see, he was saying his complaint, complaint, complaint. But change the complaint and start saying the word of God and you will see what happened. The moment Peter changed his complaint, he said, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And he did that. And he caught a great number of fish. And his net were breaking. Was that not because he acted on the word of God? You begin to speak the word of God and the word of God will answer for you in Jesus' name. That's what happened. This woman, 12 years of bleeding disorder, she said in herself, if only I may touch his clothes. When did she say that word? From her home, before she got to Jesus. When she heard it was Jesus, she said in herself, this is my time for miracle. This is my time. Shame has put her, kept her, only God knows for how long. But we now know it, 12 years. Kept her away from the community of people. But when she heard it was Jesus, she said in herself, it's my time. Is it your time? It's my time. This is my month. It's my time. I'm going to get healed. This is my time. I'm going to get my job. This is my time. I'm going to get promotion. This is my time. What do you want to get? For she said in herself, remember you cannot rise beyond your expectation. She said in herself, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Who taught her to say that one? She believed in God. Faith taught her. She believed in God and she said it. What will faith inspire you to say? To get out of that decorum. What will faith make you to say to get out of that cycle of disaster? What will faith make you to say to get out of that difficulty? Say it and hope will come to you. If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. She knew what would happen. If she can dare to touch the clothes of Jesus, you yourself, you know what will happen. If you dare to have hope in God and never faith. Look at the next verse, 29. Immediately. Everyone say immediately. Immediately. Within seconds. Instantly. The fountain of her blood was what? Dried up. How long has the affliction taken her? 12 years. If somebody told you that the problem you have had for many years, today it will go. Will you believe? I said the problems you have had for many years, I stand before God, before God that I serve, and I said, problem, go in Jesus' name. Amen? Look at this. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up. Twelve years of affliction stopped. In one second. Who else can do that? God. God will do your speed. For those that are watching at home, for those that are listening by phone, God will do your own. If you believe that, say Amen. Because of hope. I don't know what you are trusting. Some people trust in their power. Some people trust in their intellect. Some people trust in their job. Some people trust in their cars. According to Psalm 12, verse 7 to 8. Psalm 12, verse 7 to 8. But those that trusted in God, they stood out. Psalm 12, 
7 to 8. So you shall keep them, O Lord, shall preserve, preserve them from this generation forever. Verse 8. Thank you. So some trust in chariots, others trust in horses, but we shall trust in the name of the Lord. Said the four, but we shall rise. Psalm 20, verses 7 to 8. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Look at what happened to them. They have bowed down and fallen. But we have risen and stand upright. <laughs> what are you trusting? In whom are you trusting? Before long, the source of your hope shall be revealed. The source of your hope shall be revealed. And if it's not God, if it's not in the word of God, what a shame that befalls such people. Don't trust in your job. Don't trust in your money. Don't trust in any man. What man can do? Jeremiah 17.5 Jeremiah 17.5 tells you why you should not trust in a man. Thus says the Lord, cost is a man who trusts a man. Yeah, I have somebody that will help me. <laughs> My brother said he will help me. My sister said he will help me. Don't trust in a man. The best of a man is still a man. God is the man who trusts in the man. You see? The one that trusts in the man is cursed already. And makes his flesh his strength. Cost is the one that makes the flesh his strength. Whose heart departs from the Lord. As you go into this month, I want you to reposition your hope in God. Position your hope in the word of God. Make quickly sure, certainly sure, without any doubt, that your hope is deep in the word of God. As you pour over the word of God on a day-to-day -day basis, day and night, Speak the word of God from your mouth. Let your hearing hear it. It does something to your heart. It reassures you that you are on the right path. The word of God gives us direction. David said, your word, your word is a light. Your word is a lamp unto my path. The light is a lamp unto my feet. The light unto my path. The word, your word, is a lamp. Lamp and a light. So the word of God gives light unto our path. The word of God gives direction. So as you go into this month, reposition your hope in God. Find the word of God that you will draw strength from, especially in the period of uncertainty when you don't know what is happening. You need to draw strength from the word of God. Don't let anything shake the source. Don't let anything shake your hope. If your hope is rooted in the word of God, it cannot be shaken. Rather, your hope will abound through the help of the Holy Spirit. And only then can you become partaker of hope. Let us pray. Please pray. Open my eyes to see. 
open my eyes to see is there anything that is making you afraid it's not from God now pray open my eyes to see how to overcome this fear and whatever God tells you that is what will happen are you praying please pray you cannot live here the same as you have come today if you have come in fear you cannot live with fear you have to live with joy and peace because there is joy there is joy and peace in believing all joy and peace in believing so please pray open my eyes that i may see i want to see what god sees open my ears to hear i want to hear what god hears i don't want to be a fearful person anymore i want to be courageous that's what god told joshua only be courageous and it's hope in God, hope in his word that brings courage. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. So says the Lord. Believe his prophet and you shall prosper. So says the Lord. That is the source of your prosperity. That's the source of your establishment from God. Any other thing is fake. Please pray. Open the eyes of my mind to see. They said the God of this world has blinded the minds of those who do not believe. Now, it is only those who do not believe that the eyes of their minds has been blinded. But you believe, why can't you see? Please pray. Open the eyes of my mind to see what is the hope of your calling. Hear yourself as you pray. Hear yourself as you pray. So you will know whether you, you believe what you are saying or not. And lastly, for anyone that is listening and watching, I want to pray. You need to come back to God. You need to repent and come back to God. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. God forbid. How shall we that have died to sin continue to live therein? You cannot say you are born again and still living in sin. You cannot say that you are deceiving yourself and there is no truth in you. And if rapture comes, don't say I didn't tell you. Because every no sinner will make it to heaven. No sinner will make it to heaven. It is here on earth that they will confess their sin and repent. Before they can get to heaven. And it's only in Christ Jesus that will make it to heaven. Anything outside that is counterfeit. I want to ask the Lord to save you. Ask him to save you. want to be born again. You thought you are born again but you are not. Because those thoughts that are coming to you. They are not good thoughts. They are not. They are dirty thoughts. Now can you imagine. If you are a child of God, the children, child of light, will you be having those dirty thoughts? It should be, be changed. It should be stopped. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Do you agree? Something is wrong. Now, ask God to save you. Ask God to stop those thoughts. Every access that those thoughts are coming, they are evil thoughts. Ask God to stop those thoughts. Bible says in God, God, in God, there is light and there is no darkness at all. There is no darkness at all. There is no immorality with God. Ask him to save you. Tell him, I want to be saved. I give my heart to you, O God. Begin to say, I give my heart to you. Give me your own heart. Enter, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I want to enjoy what it means to be born again. I want to experience it, O God. If I am born again, can Jesus be afraid as I'm being fearful? Can Jesus be afraid? Every day of my life I'm living in fear. Am I really born again? Jehovah, I want to be born again. I want to be saved. Where I will not be afraid anymore. Help me, Lord. 
come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Are you praying? Please pray. If it comes from your heart, God will hear you. God is searching your heart right now. God is searching your heart and the intent of your talk. If it's not genuine, forget it. God is only going to visit those whose hearts are genuine towards it. You are a youth. You too can accept Christ as Lord and Savior. All those choices, all those, all those advances, they are evil. Why don't you stop it and give your heart to Jesus? You are more. God is telling you, you are failing. You are failing what you need to tell your children, you are not telling them. You are, a, you are a dad. You are not even at the prayer meeting. You are not holding prayer meeting with your family and you are the head of the family. What kind of family is that? Ask him, Lord, I have failed you. Please forgive me. I don't want you to live here the same. I want you to be changed. Be changed. And God will forgive you. God will forgive you. God will forgive you. Receive the forgiveness of God. Become a new man from within. I command the light of the gospel of Christ to shine into your heart. I command your eyes, the eyes of your mind to be open right now. Be open in the name of Jesus. I command every chains and shackles of the wicked one to be broken from your heart, from your life in the name of Jesus. You will serve God all the days of your life in the name of Jesus. It shall be well with you. In this month shall be a month of advancement. It shall be a month of moving forward. It shall be a month of progress. It shall be a month of celebration. It shall be a month of testimony. It's long that you testify. You are next in line in the name of Jesus. I begin to thank you. If God has called you to serve, for, for you to serve him, serve him. Serve him every day. Study the word of God. If you need help, you have the pastors there, you have your bishop there, go to them. They will help you. They will point you in the right direction. You cannot be a child of God and still be hopeless. You need the word of God. Give your heart to daily study of the word of God. Give your heart to prayer and things will change for you. Lord will thank you. Lord will bless you. Lord will thank you. Lord will bless you. Lord will thank you. Lord will bless you. Begin to thank you. Begin to thank you. Begin to thank you.